Welcome back, France 24 News. And now it's time for our international press view in the papers. And I'm joined now by Eve Jackson, who's been going through the papers. And Eve, I'm guessing then Sri Lanka, of course, that catastrophic situation is dominating all the headlines. Yeah, it's been dubbed a humanitarian catastrophe. Um, if you look at India's Hindu paper, there are some shocking images of civilians stranded by the fighting. India, of course, is Sri Lanka's closest neighbour. It's also in the India's Deccan Chronicle. An article talks about how India isn't going to get involved and is going to leave Sri Lanka to it to try and sort it out for itself. One of the leading opinion articles in the UK Times is looking at all sides of the conflict and what should be done now. Now, this is written by um, a journalist of Tamil descent living in North uh, America, whose name has been changed for security reasons. This journalist says the conflict has long been inaccurately described as a war between minority Tamils and majority Sinhalese. But while the ethnic tensions do play a role, it has become a war between the armed and, in fact, the unarmed. Civilians suffering from fire on both sides, from the Tigers and from the army. This journalist says the international organisations have to get involved and have to try and sort this out. As the war comes to an end, they say the government can only achieve legitimacy by respecting the rights of all of its citizens equally and rebuilding a country that is truly pluralist and just. Um, and he says that has to begin in a no-fire zone and the world has to hold Sri Lanka to account. OK, and that was a piece that appeared in the UK's The Times. In The then. Times. OK, well, actually, let's stay with the UK because, of course, they had their budget presented uh, yesterday. How's that been covered in the dreaded, papers? It was dreaded, and the verdict in the papers has not largely been good. It's basically been slammed. But how on earth was the government going to respond to the mm. worst economic crisis in decades? OK, let's have a look at The Independent. It's been described as disappointing, old-fashioned and attuned to voters who might be tempted to stay at home in the next general election. It talks of bringing forward a tax rise for the rich as one of the few surprises in Alistair Darling's budget. OK, let's have a look at The Guardian. A bit more support here for Alistair Darling, saying he did well in a tight spot. It doesn't fail, though, to criticise Gordon Brown and his light-touch regime when he was Chancellor. It says um, Darling must have been seething when he inherited this from Gordon Brown. But it also praises Darling for being loyal, for being calm in the crisis, and says basically Labour's lucky to have him as a Chancellor. It says his measures are all well judged and will make a difference. OK, um, let's That's have a look. That's the Guardian state, the Guardian, which is left-leaning. Of course, we have got a left-wing government in, in power. The okay, Labour Party, so. but in the left-wing tabloid, The Mirror, it gives details of practically what this budget is going to mean for its readers and it sums that up by saying it's not going to mean very much and they're basically going to be no better off. It lists the low earner, the pensioner, the unemployed family, the average earner, the single mum and the small business, all to be hit by more expensive booze, all to be hit by more expensive cigarettes and petrol. Uh, some of these readers describe the budget as basically being a slap in the face for them. OK, well, we've got about 30 seconds left. Let's talk about... Thin, I see there you've written in bold from Australia's press. Well, women's weight in the news today. First of all, in Australia's Herald Sun and much of the Australian press, there's talk of the Miss Universe Australia contestant who's being branded underweight, unhealthy and too bony to be beautiful. Uh, this competition is supposed to promote healthy uh, proportioned bodies. Lots of talk about role models now in the press because of this lady who is said to be super thin. It always flares up when super thin women are in the public eye, but she did get voted out. Um, oh, OK, so she's not Miss Australia. On Wednesday. No, she was a contestant. Oh, OK, and she weighed 49 kilos, you said. 49. We were trying to do the maths and work out what that was in pounds. All right, 10 seconds. And in Aujourd'hui en France, it reports on a survey which says French women are the thinnest in Europe, although they don't realise they are. And unfortunately, Hannah, us Brits... We're the fattest. Are we? Is that a fact? Is that a fact that we're the fattest? Maybe we're just happier, jollier. We enjoy our food more. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's not necessarily better than it is here in France. That's it uh, for this uh, edition of In the Papers. Do stay with us. News on its way here at France 24.